Hey guys, my name is Jim Grant. I'm a writer, photographer, and videographer in the firearms industry. And a few of you might even recognize me from some of my other past projects like Burst Review, as well as some of my print publications and digital publications and blogs that I've written for in the 10 plus years I've been in the firearms industry. Recently, TFB TV decided to bring me on board to help them with some of the new changes that YouTube's been unrolling in regards to firearms content in YouTube videos. And my first assignment was to create a video that the rest of TFB TV can use as a guideline for how to create videos that adhere to the new strict policies set forth by YouTube. So without further ado, let's go grab one of my all time favorites, an M4A1 semi-automatic clone, and get Like all of Stoner's direct impingement designs, the M4A1 has remarkably little recoil even in its semi-automatic configuration. This, combined with the flat nature of its 5.56 cartridge, makes for one accurate little So much so, that engaging distant targets is a breeze with next to no holdover necessary, but these aren't the only aspects that make this M4A1 clone desirable, and for that matter, any AR-15. Indeed, other aspects, like its inline design, total modularity, caliber conversion, as well as the fact that because of its modularity, it can play very well with optics, makes it a very, very attractive for both new and veteran But that's not all. For those of you out there who like to quietly, you can add a sound suppressor like this Saker 762 from Silencer Co. provided by Silencer Shop. And while it adds a little bit of weight, length, and just a tad bit of girth, it makes the experience that much more pleasurable because it's so quiet that you can all day long. But unfortunately, like anything else, there's no free lunch. Who's running a suppressor will have to deal with the fact that because of the increased back pressure of the sound suppressor, it tends to make their AR-15 blow its hot load inside the action prematurely, making for a really, really messy inside. Now there's a few ways around this. First, always keep lubed. You want this thing dripping wet. The wetter, the better. And when you want to clean your hot shit, be sure to really get in there and scrub deep. You might need special tools for the job, or you can use a finger. Sometimes, if it's really dirty, you might need two fingers. You'll have to just really get in there and just get every nasty inch, sometimes two knuckles down, to get this thing just spotless. Though, since sh is a direct impingement, sh should always be a dirty g Just the same, for sh who prefer to sh their loads at night as opposed to shooting in the middle of the day, a sound suppressor is ideal. Because in addition to reducing the volume of your sh it also drastically reduces the muzzle flash. Meaning you won't disturb your neighbors should the urge to strike you in the middle of the night. But a word of warning for sh unfamiliar with the AR-15 or its many derivatives, like this M4A1 clone, is when you're inserting a magazine, like this Magpul P-Mag, be sure to do so with authority, especially on a closed bolt. You'll have to really get in there and just get all the way in there. You'll notice if you kind of limp wrist it, you can pull right out, it's not very secure. So stick it in hard and slap its bottom to make sure it's all the way in, just the way the gun likes it. Combine that with any Sammy spec load and your AR-15 will be running like a top in no time. Look how well she runs. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this video. And of course, I'm sure you're all looking forward to seeing the rest of TFP's videos and hear these new policies. Thanks guys. For TFB TV, I'm Jim Grant. Catch you on the flip side.